Hello everyone, we're in Almaty. Today is the 24th day of the race, we finished. Today is the 4th of July, and we are at the Almaty Arena Ice Palace. The feeling is great. I'm very tired and very happy that the race is over. But it was interesting. Day after day passed ordinarily, and suddenly there was the finish. It was awesome. Our journey stretched for a whole 24 days. If we talk about the hardest part, it was probably the first week, when we had rains and problems with equipment. But the last sections, starting from approximately Kizilorda, was just great. There were absolutely no problems with the motor temperature. There was more than enough traction. It could have pulled some more load, but we were saving energy and drove only with the help of the sun. And yes, we had to lose speed. The team consisted of Oleg, the chief technical specialist of resource, and Murad, the driver of the technical support vehicle. The most inconspicuous member of the team is Nikita, who is now standing on the other side of the machine. The team is really amazing. Completely different people complemented each other in everything. There were moments of friction, which flared up like matches and quickly went out as well. Basically, I would say that we made a very good team. The interpreter helped because he had a radio station mounted on the car. He communicated with trucks, which gave us information about the location of our tuk-tuk. That is, we could let the tuk-tuk go far away and have time to do something ourselves. During those 24 days, we slept half the days in hotels and half the days in fields near the road. The technical support vehicle would pull in a little bit ahead. I would pass by, the car would stay in its place for a while to give me a chance to drive 20-40 kilometers away. And then they would overtake me again and get into another point. It was very inconvenient for a light car to follow me at 20 kilometers per hour all the time. The best quality in Vladimir is calmness, composure and persistence, which allowed him to overcome this way. I don't know how he overcame it. I guess he assimilated himself to the tuk-tuk. It's probably going to take him a long time to wean off it now. Because it was like he and the tuk-tuk could feel each other. The first thing is patience. Imagine having to constantly adjust the throttle handle in your right hand, because the spring always brings the throttle handle back. It is better, of course, to do cruise control, that is, to adjust the approximate consumption, because there was constant monitoring of the consumption, so as not to run out of power prematurely and to drive as long as possible. It was necessary to twist the knob back and forth all the time. And, of course, the arm naturally gets tight and stiff. Oleg has positive qualities. But actually, if we talk about Oleg as a person, he has very few negative traits. They are mostly all positive. The most important thing is that he is kind. He is not evil. He is sociable and communicative. But at the same time, he has a good knowledge base, especially in electrical engineering. In terms of design, we came up with very good ideas. A very good, sturdy structure was achieved with the materials we used. Nothing broke off all the way through. But I would move the battery back here to put more weight on the drive rear wheels. 
other ways, the balance is excellent. The tuk-tuk did not overturn anywhere. It was stable on inclines, on passes. We had no remarks to it at high speed. Why did people save all this car? That is some kind of miracle. One could write a book of epithets to our tuk-tuk, which we listened to all along the way. It was called All Sorts of Things. But nevertheless, I will say that everyone was very pleasantly surprised that such a structure can move such distances. As for the participants, it was exactly the same situation. People were all divided. Someone believed that the technology was not working. Someone believed that it was working. And the third group, it was... Oh, we don't know. Let's see. And those participants who believed in the technology and the design, basically, as I understood, their belief was based on the fact that the tuk-tuk was created by a company, that is, a legal entity, just on that. And in fact, it was created by enthusiasts, like every single person who participated in this race. Well, yes, just a legal entity, a company, organization. But someone thought that everything will be done at the highest level. And someone else said, like, if it's a company, then everything should go without a hitch. But it's actually a test. It's just a test in harsh real conditions. What if you didn't figure out all the weak links in the design, etc.? The tuk-tuk hadn't been tested like that. The company created something. Everything was mostly in theory. And practice begins to show weak links. And all this is normal, because it is a test. There are no complaints about the motor. It even had a power reserve. Saying that it did not pull and lacked power. Well, I did not notice that. We went up quite steep ascents. But it was not only about long ascents. But also when we stopped it and went to sleep, we had to leave very steep roadsides. And it withstood it all perfectly, without any problems. I was worried about the coupling connecting the electric motor and the gearbox. Because it turned out to be a weak link in our powerful athlete called Tuk Tuk. And such a coupling between the motor and the gearbox is an absolutely weak link. I was very worried about it. So now I'm glad that my torment is over and that this coupling survived until the end of the race. How long it will last, I can't say, but definitely not for long. The coupling was a rigid connection. But we need a connection that will be a full-fledged clutch. And there is no clutch here. Either it is necessary to make a full-fledged clutch with this gearbox, or get rid of the gearbox, differential, and other things, and make another totally different power structure. First, when the team tried the speed on a flat road, without any descents and ascents, just on a flat road, it reached a speed of 50-55 km per hour. Of course, we exceeded a little, but the consumption increased due to the headwind. 
But the fact is that it was 55 km per hour on a flat road. It was more than 200 km, 215 I guess. And it overcame the whole distance quite energetically. And there were moments when we had to charge on the go. Literally, you stop, you charge up, and then you set out immediately. There was such a section. In the heat, at high air temperature, we were a little let down by solar panels. They began to give too little. They gave 35 volt instead of 41, let's say. And of course, the amperage dropped. That's why it took longer. In some areas, we could not accelerate up to 200, that is, cover 200 kilometers a day. Because we did not have enough charge, it was too long. The most difficult moment of the whole race was the day when the accident happened. It was the day when the second stage started, where the scoring was done. And I did not have time to make it to the start. I was in a hurry in order to get sufficient scoring and got into an accident. It was the most difficult and hard day psychologically, not physically. Although it was also physically difficult. It was hot, and the traffic on the road was very intense, two lane, and everyone was not just driving, but honking for some reason as well. I don't know why drivers do this, why they honk. In short, it was hard both psychologically and physically that day. And all my hopes were dashed when the accident happened. It was psychologically hard to drive, realizing that you will not have the required score. Although I did not agree with that. It was unfair, I think, to exclude me from the score. I did not charge from the sockets, I followed all the rules, and I arrived at Ektebe. But then they told me, now it's another 90 km to go. To be honest, this race turned me on. I want to take part in something else, in no less extreme conditions. I assume that it is better to create a new one, because what we have used now is a finished product. But I want to try to do something myself, so that it is created from scratch and tested by myself. That would be interesting. I think I will enthusiastically agree to participate in another similar adventure. In addition, I'm sure that this race will remain the most difficult for me. And I'm sure that the next races will be a little easier. Firstly, it is experience, and secondly, correct technical issues. So yes, I will agree to participate. During this long journey, a thought came to me that we should be kinder to each other. Kinder to those who are not afraid to lose face and who do things. I wish other test drivers and pilots good luck, successful technical solutions, and that they succeed. To make everything they dream about work out for them. That's great, because only creators can enjoy life. <laughs>